Fox News alert. The Secret Service held its first press conference since Donald Trump was nearly executed on live TV. After stonewalling the media and congressional investigators for three weeks, Director Ronald Rowe made a shocking admission. Watch. Can you confirm that this was the first 2024 campaign event that counter sniper teams were assigned to the former president? It was the first time Secret Service counter snipers uh, were deployed to support uh, the former president's detail. The former president of the United States and the nominee as the Republican, the man who Democrats and the media have been labeling a clear and present danger to democracy, Hitler and a dictator, wasn't given Secret Service counter sniper teams at his campaign rallies for the last two years. That means when they put Trump on trial in Manhattan every day when he returned from court to Trump Tower, there were no Secret Service counter snipers. The whole world knew Trump's schedule and location for six weeks in a city with thousands of windows and high rises. No Secret Service counter snipers. That means when Trump was in the Bronx, no Secret Service counter snipers. Anyone could have climbed onto a tree, could have gone onto a rooftop with a gun. What about when he went to the bodega in Harlem after court? He's enveloped by buildings, hundreds of windows, any one of which a rifle could have fired from. No Secret Service counter snipers. So why all of a sudden, after two years of no Secret Service counter snipers, they showed up in Butler? And that was the rally where there was an attempt on his life. After the assassination attempt, the intelligence community leaked an exclusive to their friends at CNN, saying the reason they added counter snipers to Butler was because of an Iranian threat to Trump's life. But that doesn't make any sense, because there's been an Iranian fatwa out for Trump since he whacked Soleimani. That was over four years ago. And when the feds were pressed about this, they admitted there wasn't any new intelligence from Iran. What a coincidence. The Secret Service surrounding Trump's been an illusion. We believe these agents were in constant communication with each other, using the latest technology, technology we didn't even know about. Turns out, the Secret Service counter sniper team in Butler never had radios that day. You mentioned that there were text messages from Butler ESU to U.S. Secret Service counter snipers. I'm curious if that is routine. What was the plan to relay information from locals to the Secret Service initially? What is the protocol? With respect to the counter snipers, um, they were using cellular or telephone text communications. Uh, at, at this point, moving forward, what I have directed now is that everybody should be using the radio net. If you see a man with a gun on the roof, do you have time to text your counter snipers? Wouldn't it be a lot easier if you could just radio into their earpiece arm thread on the roof of the AGR building? Are those counter snipers up on the roof just for show? And it looks like these guys had their phones on silent because when the locals alerted the Secret Service team leader, we still don't know who that is, that there was a suspicious person with a range finder creeping around the AGR building, it took the team leader eight minutes to text the counter sniper team. Eight minutes is a long time. The counter snipers, if they even looked at their phones, saw this just seven minutes before Trump took the stage. But did they even look at their phones? We don't know. They won't tell us. When the locals spotted crooks on the roof with a rifle, they radioed it into the Secret Service site leader. And the director claims the site leader never got it. It was so apparent to me that in this incident, uh, in the final 30 seconds, which has been the focus of what happened before the assailant opened fire. There was clearly radio transmissions that may have happened on that local radio net that we did not have. Uh, and so we have to do a better job of co-locating, leveraging that counterpart system, and this is going to drive our operations going forward. Translation, the Secret Service set up a walkie-talkie system with the locals that they weren't in on. It's like whisper down the lane. And when the news finally gets to the Secret Service, they text their counter sniper guys. That system's destined to fail. They're telling us that the counter sniper team didn't know there was a man on the roof with a gun until shots rang out. That's what they're telling us. Even as we watch videos of Trump supporters screaming, there's a man with a gun on the roof. The director was caught in another lie. He claimed the Secret Service briefed the locals the morning of the rally. In the morning, of July 13th, a site briefing was conducted with Secret Service personnel and law enforcement partners supporting the event. But that's not what the locals told us. 
we were supposed to get a face-to-face -face briefing with the Secret Service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened, and we had no communication with the Secret Service. Secret Service has never talked to any of our people either before the rally that day or to this moment has ever talked to us in regards to what our actions were that day. The Secret Service hired these guys to protect the president's life, never briefed them that day, never talked to them that day, and haven't talked to them at all since the shooting. What a convenient way not to leave a trail. The security for this rally was overseen by the Secret Service Pittsburgh field office. And according to a whistleblower who spoke to Senator Hawley's office, there was a female decision maker, but we can't confirm a name at this point. Whoever was responsible for this on the ground is being protected. And Director Rowe says they're actually the victim here. If you can, describe the Pittsburgh field office and their level of experience, especially in preparing for events like this. And, and also, have they explained their thinking and how they defined the perimeter that day? Sure. Thanks, Holmes. You know, our, our Pittsburgh field office, uh, I don't think there's anybody in the Secret Service who is feeling this more than the men and women of our Pittsburgh field office. Um, and I've met with them. Um, and they are down right now. It's an open wound that they are carrying. They are a very experienced office. Um, and what I will say is um, they are cooperating with the mission assurance. They are definitely, definitely down right now. Oh, they're down right now. The poor little Pittsburgh field office. Maybe we can get them therapy dogs. Trump almost took a bullet to the brain. He's the one with the open wound. And the only reason he's still alive isn't because of the Secret Service and the poor little Pittsburgh field office. It's because he got lucky and turned his head to the right. The entire Pittsburgh field office should be placed on administrative leave, have all their electronics seized, and be put under formal investigation. But the director hasn't asked anybody. And the people in charge of the Butler rally security are still doing security at rallies. And a new report from Real Clear Politics says the agents who swarmed Trump after he was shot, most of them weren't even his regular detail. Susan Crabtree says the group was made up of various field office agents who don't train together. Is that why agents who surrounded Trump sounded so confused? If you needed another reason to vote in this election, it's this. If Kamala is elected, the Trump assassination attempt investigation will be bottlenecked. Donald Trump told me that if he's elected, he'll declassify everything about the attempt on his life. So if you want to know what happened this July, you know what to do in November.